Hey everybody, Ash Ketchum here. Uh, obviously, I'm not. And this is not a Pokemon Go video, although it is related to Pokemon. So if you recognize how I'm dressed, you'll know that I'm the main character of the Pokemon cartoon series, um, Ash Ketchum. But it's really me, Mr. G, uh, Matthew Gadinius, sixth grade teacher, paperless classroom teacher, um, highly ed tech integrated teacher. And the reason I'm dressed this way is to introduce an idea I came up with this year to sort of gamify my classroom, make it a little more fun for the kids. Uh, I knew that there were, the incoming class is really into video games, so I wanted to do like a video game theme. And originally I was going to do Minecraft math, because it lends itself well to that. And I still might do a little bit with that this year. But then the Pokemon Go craze came out over the summer. Now I don't play it, um, ain't nobody got time for that, when you're a teacher anyway. But I used to play the old Pokemon Game Boy games and the card game and stuff, so I know about Pokemon and I've wanted to try this for a while. And it's a concept called Pokemath gotta solve them all. Okay, so instead of catching them all, you gotta solve them all, all the math problems. So let me introduce a little bit about how it works in case you want to use it in your classroom. Um, you can modify it for all sorts of subjects or modify the levels of the math for your own classroom. Pokemath is a system I came up with um, once I realized how big and exciting Pokemon was becoming again. It's been around since the 1990s. It's been around for about 20 years now is when the first uh, original video games and animated series came out. Um, and it was a Nintendo-based game. If you're not sure what Pokemon is, let me just show you a little picture of one of the main characters and kind of what it's about. Um, this is Ash Ketchum. He's one of the main characters. You can see he's holding this little ball. And uh, this is my website that I provide to students and parents. So you see I've set it up with a Pokemon theme on Google Sites. And the Pokeball is this little... Um, basically, the premise of the game is there's these trainers or these uh, Pokemon catchers that wander around the environment and catch these little monsters or creatures that are kind of hidden or magical or whatever. And the whole premise is that there's all these different variety of creatures that you can catch, and then they can be trained, they can kind of battle against each other in these gyms to see who wins the match, um, and they can evolve into more powerful creatures. So the original slogan is, gotta catch them all. And that's kind of the point of the game, is to get all of them and to um, defeat these other Pokemon masters that use them for doing little battles. Okay, so that's the basic premise of the game. And the way I've tied that into math, I've thought about Pokemon math for a few years now, um, but decided to finally make a go of it with how popular it's become again based on Pokemon Go, is that I've got all the instructions here on my Paperless Mojo blog. Um, you can go to paperlessmojo.com or I'll provide links to all these resources down below in the video section. Um, but the way it basically works is it's just a badge or sticker system. You're rewarding kids for solving or mastering certain math skills in this case. I've set it up using Khan Academy. Now Khan Academy is not our main curriculum for math. We have an actual digital curriculum called Pearson Digits that we've adopted. But this is a fun supplemental thing that could be inspiring and motivating for the kids to try to do things in addition to our regular curriculum and homework. So uh, what we've done here is I've created a table in Google Docs that I've shared with the uh, teachers on my blog and I've also shared it with students on my Pokemon website here and parents. Everybody has easy access to see it. And each Pokemon creature, here's a name, there's a picture of them, um, they have a, a link to a specific skill in Khan Academy that needs to be mastered. So the basic premise is if a student masters that skill in Khan Academy, I will periodically check. In this case, it takes a while, so I'm not going to do it every week, but I'm going to collect folders, math folders that they're being given, plastic math folders, three prongs so that they can store um, some lined paper in it. I do almost everything paperless, but um, writing down work for math is super important, so uh, the best way for them to do that at home especially is just with paper, even though they're going to be answering the questions in our um, digitized curriculum on the computer. So this will be their designated math folder, and this is going to be their Pokedex. The Pokedex meaning uh, an, an index of their Pokemon, uh, a collection that shows them which ones they've caught. And that's going to be done via stickers. Now, you could probably do it as digital badges, but I just thought it'd be very fun and engaging, even for kids that might not be into Pokemon, to have to, to be able to collect all these stickers. I'm using the Chroma Label 3 quarter inch, 0 0.75 inch dots for this, um, mostly because I needed over 11,000 of them to, to cover all 151 Pokemon for all of my students. Um, I've created templates for all of these Pokemon. And uh, so if you want to use my sticker templates, you'll need to use those Chroma Label 0.75 inch stickers. And you can get to all these resources on my blog 
if you go up to the part at the very top that just says materials and resources, there's links to all these things if you want to buy them straight from Amazon, like I did. Okay, I also bought a few extra wall um, stickers and little miniature figurines and stuff that weren't a bad deal. A whole bunch of them for not too much money. Okay, so how does it work? Basically, you just provide the students with this table of requirements. Now, you could do this with anything. It doesn't have to be math. It's just that Khan Academy already has over 120 discrete skills to master. And there's 151 of these Pokemon creatures. So it matches up pretty well. Now, obviously, there's leftovers, right? So if you want to catch them all, what do you have to do? Well, some of the rare ones, some of the, some of the more powerful cr creatures, I've designated for even other subjects. We're doing a, a three-subject rotation in my team this year. I'm teaching math, one teacher's teaching science, one is teaching language arts. So I thought it would be cool to incentivize the kids that if they really want to get all the Pokemon, they also have to do some great things in math and language arts classes too. And then I've got more study skill things, like just doing all the homework for the year. We'll get them Snorlax, which is a rare and powerful creature. Um, if they do all their art for the year, they can get Articuno, because last year some of the kids would kind of just brush off our art projects. If they do a good job in PE and don't get negative grades in that, they can get Mewtwo. And if they participate in band, they can get one. But I also allow them to buy it with points over here. So let's talk about this table here, just so you understand what it, what it looks like, what it means. Each row of this table shows the Pokemon, a picture of them, that's what's on the sticker, uh, the name, in case the students don't know what the name is, if they haven't played the game, they might not know. Pokemon have a, a type or two types associated with them. You don't have to worry about this for the basic Pokemath idea, but I added a little actual interactive game component where you can actually duel or battle each other with your Pokemon, because one of the students was super excited about the idea and started asking me if there's any way that we could use them a little bit like the real game where you can kind of challenge each other. Um, so I've actually come up with a way, a simple way to do that. Then there's the link to, in this case, a Khan Academy skill. So if you click on that, it'll take you directly to that skill. Now if they solve these skills, the Khan Academy is a little strange the way it's set up. If they go through and they answer these and get three or five or however many right, it'll say they passed. But that doesn't get them to mastery. There's a whole blog post or forum post for Khan Academy that talks about how the students get to mastery. Basically they have to do a mastery challenge when they sign in. What you want to do is you want to set up your own Khan Academy account and create a, a coach account for yourself and create classes. I've created my class here. And once you've done that, students can put in your class code when they log into Khan Academy, um, either with a Google account, for example, or they can set up just a separate Khan Academy account. Um, and they will sign up for your class. And then from there, when they do work on the mastery challenges or on the practice, now when you click the link directly there, it takes them to the practice. Um, and if they do the Mastery Challenge, then they can actually show Mastery of the Skill, which is this dark blue thing here. So when I collect those folders, those blue folders, to put the stickers on, which look like this, I will go through and check the mastery of each skill and give them one accordingly. So for example, the first skill, a very basic one, remainder from fifth grade, a review from fifth grade, compare decimals through the thousands place. Which ones are bigger through the thousands place. So I can check and see which students have mastered that and then find their folders and place the sticker that aligns with that skill. Now I've arranged these a specific way because in the game some of the creatures are more powerful or more rare to find than other ones so it's more exciting. Well I want the ones to be that are more rare, more difficult, more exciting to also be more challenging math skills. So I've grouped them based on similar math types, but the harder ones, for example, word problems, right here, is a very rare, whereas the simple ones are just uncommon or even common types. And that'll affect the game. I'll show you how to play the little battle game, too, if you want. But as you see here, comparing decimals through thousands is Caterpie. So I would go through that list, see who's mastered that skill there for the first one, and take the Caterpie sticker and stick it on each of their folders. Now, I wanted to come up with an alternative way and make it more like the real game, where they could obtain Pokemon even if they get stuck on a math skill. And that's where this number on the side comes from. It says points to spend. Uh, these points, you could decide how you want to do it, but in my class I use Class Dojo, which is an app, a behavior management app, where you can log behaviors in class, positive or negative behaviors, and you can reward students with points for good behaviors, or you can possibly dock them um, for negative behaviors. And in this case, that incentivizes getting those points because then they can store them up and they can actually spend them to what we call evolve the Pokemon. You'll see there's Pokemon that look very similar 
And this is called like a Pokemon family. There's basically a base Pokemon, and then they can evolve to become more powerful. So in my game, they can either get the more powerful Pokemon by completing and mastering the math skill, or if they have the lower level Pokemon, they can spend this many points to upgrade or evolve to the next level. Now when they evolve in my game, it doesn't change the Pokemon. They just keep the old sticker, and they would also receive the new sticker on top of it. And so these are all the Pokemon families. I've used all 151 Pokemon that are in Pokemon Go. That They're called the first generation Pokemon. There are other ones that exist in other versions of the game and the TV show. Um, but we're just using the original series. 151 is plenty enough to find things to assign badges for. So that's the basic game. You could get started with that right now and you could assign your own skills either in Khan Academy or through your curriculum. These could be books that you read. It could be Newzella articles that you read if you wanted to do something with reading comprehension. There's so many ways you could go with this. It's basically just a badge reward, sticker reward system for specific discrete tasks and abilities and skills that they've proven that they can do or perseverance that they, that they follow through with. If you want to take it to the next level, like my student suggested, that's where I came up with the idea for Pokemon duels. Pokemath duels, I should say. And there I am dressed up in my costume that I wore the first day of doing this to get the kids excited about it. Not that it took much effort to do that. Um, and I provided a little game system here. It's a pretty simple game. Basically, it's going to be a math review. I'll put up a question on the board, and the students will have to answer on their whiteboards and show me. And they'll secretly write their answers, but they'll also choose a Pokemon that they want to challenge their partner with. So each one will have their their Pokedex that they can choose from, and they can choose any of their creatures to match up against their opponent. Now the creatures have different types, as you see here, one or two types, and those types have strengths and weaknesses against other types. So that's part of the game, is trying to guess what type of, of Pokemon your opponent will use. And the Pokemon are also rated on strength based on how rare they are to find. So that way, the ones that are harder to get in the class will actually be more powerful Pokemon as well. And of course, this is math, there's fractions, decimals involved. So when they actually want to calculate the strength of their Pokemon when they do their little attack or their battle, um, they can use this table and the criteria here to do decimal and fraction multiplication to come to a final score. So this is a little more advanced. I haven't started this one yet because not all of the students have even earned a Pokemon yet. On the other hand, some of my students have over 20 Pokemon in their Pokedex and it's only been a week of school and they've, they've mastered skills that we haven't even learned yet and they've never been taught just because they were so motivated to go to Khan Academy and learn those skills. So, that's Pokemath. Uh, gotta solve them all and I hope you do. I hope you try it in your class. Uh, it's a, it can be a little logistically challenging at first, um, especially collecting all the folders and putting the stickers on. At the beginning, there's a lot of review and, and easy skills to master, so it takes a lot to go through all of them, but I I assume it's going to taper off as it becomes more challenging. There will not be as much time spent adding stickers because it will take longer for the students to earn them, is what I predict. So there it is. Enjoy, and all the resources are free in the Pokemath uh, folder on Google Drive.